Let's do just a quick overview of keys. And this is the cover of the current key and keyway standard. Look at this thing. This is so old that um, it is the standard family that came before ANSI even existed back in 1967. Then uh, ANSI took the standard. It was reaffirmed in 2013, and if you squint up close, you notice that you can find out about it by emailing somebody at ASME. So, and here's ASME at the bottom. So, <laughs> what we see from this is that keys and keyways do not change very often. Key, a key is just a, a rigid chunk of metal that connects the shaft and the hub. A word about vocabulary. Around here in this region, I, my observation is that most people say keyway. I know that's what I say. I always say keyway. But if you read that ANSI standard we just looked at, it does not use the word keyway. It only says key seat. And then in our book, he says, well, uh, it should be called a key seat if it's in a shaft and a key way if it's in a hub. I don't know about that. I've never heard anybody do that. So you are welcome to use the words either key seat or key way. You'll be correct whichever word you use. One thing to think about if you're using just a plain old square key in a key way is when you're dimensioning your drawing, think about the effective length of the keyway. And the length depends on um, how the thing was made. Now, they might have used a horizontal mill, which means the shaft is horizontal and the cutter is rotating vertically. Here's a diagram up above. Or they may have used an end mill, which is looks a little bit like a drill in a drill press. Here's a picture up here. Notice in either case there's some round part of the keyway uh, so the, the, the section of keyway that the key could fit in does not go all the way to the end. If they use a horizontal mill you have a round uh, thing at the end that looks kind of like a sled runner. If they use an end mill you have a radius slot looking thing at each end. So there is the effective length of the keyway. Um, I worked at one company where they wanted us to dimension the effective keyway length on the drawing and we could make the keyway longer and the machinist often made it longer but we had to dimension what the minimum effective length was because they were going to put a key in there. <laughs> Keys come in various shapes and the one that we'll talk about and use in our gear is a plain old square key. Looks like this. Um, there will be a slot, basically half a square, not quite half a square. There'll be a slot in the shaft and a mating slot in the hub. And here's a black and white drawing. The shaft goes into the hub and you can see the key will fit into the, the bottom of the shaft keyway and the top of the hub keyway. So those two will slide together. You could also use keys of other shapes. Um, a taper is, gives you a wedging effect or you could have a key with a, a tab on the end of it that makes it easy to pull the taper key out like with a screwdriver. Woodruff key is almost a half a circle, not quite. Looks like that and it has an almost half a circle keyway. These are pages out of Machinery's handbook showing the um, dimensions for Woodruff keys. Then Pratt and Whitney looks like this and you can see the Pratt and Whitney key would fit into a slot that was made with an end mill. Last two slides. You often see a gear or a shiv or a sprocket put onto a shaft with a keyway. 
and then there'll be a hole for a set screw. Our spur gear does not have a set screw. Um, I think our bevel gear will. So think about why do you need that set screw? And a set screw is a little short machine screw with a, a point on the end. What is the purpose of that thing? If you think about that for a moment, you probably realize its purpose is to hold the key in. So you got this shaft with a keyway and a hub with a keyway and this key that can slide back and forth and maybe even slide all the way out so that set screw uh, digs down into the key and keeps it from bouncing out. I once interviewed a local company that made playground equipment and they made their stair rungs out of pipe and the pipes had set screw holes in them to hold the pipe firmly in place so the rungs wouldn't rotate when kids climbed on them. So you can use set screws for all kinds of things. So we'll stop here and now we'll go on and look at how to dimension it.